Hi, I'm John R. and I'm your instructor. Welcome to the Online Jewelry Academy. Today I'm going to show you how to make a great looking pair of earrings using simple materials that you can find at the hardware store. Now, you'll notice that one earring looks a little longer than the other. That's because one is hanging from a French ear wire and the other one is hanging from a post. Now, if you watch our soldering video, you'll learn what you need to know to make a post. And if you watch the beaded jewelry video, you'll learn how to make the French ear wire. Now, both of these earrings are exhibiting the exact same three textures on the same elements. If you look at this sampler up here, you can see that you can make a wide variety of different textures using just two hammers. I'll take you through it today and you'll have no problem whatsoever. Now let me show you some of the tools that we're going to be using today. Of course we're going to be using the washers, which are the main part of the earring, and we're going to use some ready-made components that you can find either online or at your local bead store. I'm going to use with them a couple of different pairs of pliers, a center punch, uh, a striking surface or bench block, and then I have two different hammers, a ball peen hammer and a cross peen hammer. I also have a piece of charcoal and a ceramic surface on which to place that piece of charcoal, and my mini butane torch. This of course is being well ventilated by our ventilation system, and for cleanup and polishing I've got the following. First I have the pickle pot. I also have some clear water. I also have liquid detergent, a brass brush, a pair of copper tongs, and a tumbler. And last but not least, I also have my whoops, I have my flexible shaft with a drill bit on it and my piece of wood to drill into. Now both of these items are really important don't want to drill into your bench pin or the top of your bench at all. You want to drill into a piece of scrap wood and any drill will work. A flexible shaft is the most desirable one though and the drill bit that you want to use needs to be one that's going to make a hole that's large enough to allow the jump rings that you use to swing freely but not so large that it's going to get stuck in the metal. Okay, let me clear some space here and we'll get ready to go. I've got everything cleared, so let me talk a little bit before we get started about safety. Now, we do have a safety video that you might want to check out if you haven't looked at it already. But for this, for this particular project, what you really need is something to protect your clothing, an apron works just fine, and a pair of safety glasses. You don't want anything jumping into your eyes while you're working. Okay, so I'm set up right now in order to anneal or soften the washers with heat. I'm going to use my little mini butane torch. And what we want to do is we want to look at these washers while they're being heated and they want, you want to see a dull or dark red glow. So what that means is you can't be wearing tinted glasses. You're going to have to use clear glasses so that you can see the color change. That kind of color change is really important to get used to as you begin to work with metal. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to turn on the torch and light it. Now, the blue cone is actually the flame. The rest of the, the uh, material that you see coming out of the torch is actually illuminated exhaust. So what you want to do is you want to keep that blue cone as close to your object as possible. Now you can see how as I'm heating it, the charcoal is beginning to combust and glow, and you'll notice that some of the discs are, or the washers I should say, are beginning to get that beautiful heat stain. Now this one that I'm working on is perfectly annealed. See that? That's a perfect dull red glow color. Okay, so I'm just going to keep annealing these. Now, the thing that you want to be concerned about is pay attention, watch what you're doing, because you don't want to overheat this material. Keep your flame moving, 
and make sure that you're not trying or that you're not developing any kind of melting or reticulation on the surface of the material. Now, our little ventilation system that's situated right here is actually doing a really good job of evacuating the heat and any fumes that might be coming off of the uh, charcoal block. And it, let's see, we've got one last one to do. And there's that beautiful heat staining again. And with the help of the charcoal block, which reflects heat into our material, this one should be annealed in just a matter of a few moments. There we go. It looks beautiful. Bright and pink. Turn off our torch, and I can set that away. Now, whenever you anneal something, you want to quench it in a clear water bath. Don't quench into your pickle. Your pickle is an acid bath, and you don't want that splashing on you. So we're just going to put these pieces in here and let them be cooled off by the cold water. Okay. You also want to quench your tool. Your tool will heat up when you touch hot material. Now this is just clear water, so I can reach right into it and I can move these pieces now to our pickle bath. Now, I've cheated a little bit. I've already heated up another exact set for the earrings in the pickle bath. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear some space and show you what to do after things are pickled. Okay, I've cleared some space, and now what I'm going to show you is how to clean the metal after you've annealed it. Now remember, annealing is softening of the metal with heat. You need to do this for this project because otherwise the metal will be too hard to receive the texture. Okay, I'm going to take my copper tongs and dip into my pickle bath. Now pickle is a solution of sodium bisulfate and water and I'm going to go directly into my clear water reason why I'm doing this is because I want to neutralize the acid before I touch the metal. Now, if you get this acid, oops, if you get any of it on a surface or on yourself, sometimes it's hard to grab things out of the pickle pot, but if you get any of the acid on your skin or your clothing, what you want to do is neutralize it. And the best way to do that is with some simple baking soda. You, if you get it into you, if you get the acid in your clothing, just make a little bit of a paste out of the baking soda. Put it in your hand, put some baking soda, some water, make a paste, and let's say you had some right here, you would just rub it right in and then launder your clothing as usual. If you get it on your skin, running your skin or your hands or whatever part of your body has the acid on it, just run it under water, wash it as usual, and you should be fine. The worst thing that could happen is that you develop a chemical burn or a rash and some lotion or some other dermatologist recommended cream will take care of that for you. But if you work carefully, you'll never have that problem. Okay, so I've removed them from the pickle bath and put them in the clear water. Now it's safe to handle them with my bare skin. So what I want to do is bring these items out and I want to brass brush them. Now. In order to brass brush properly, we need to use a little bit of liquid detergent on the brass brush. Now, what this does is it lubricates the bristles of the brush, allowing them to slide over the surface of the metal. Now, this is a burnishing process. What it does is it will remove the excess corrosion that didn't come off in the pickle bath and it will compress the surface atoms in order to make this look bright and shiny again. So let me do some of it for you and you'll see. You can see how the brass brush moving over this surface makes things bright and shiny. And remember, get both sides. Okay, I've cleaned the washers that we're going to be using and I've cleared away all of the pickling materials so that I can now show you how to texture the, the washers. 
the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to work with the cross peen hammer in order to texture the largest washer. Now, we're going to be using the straight end of the hammer, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the hammer like almost like a machine. I'm just going to hit in one spot over and over again, and I'm going to turn the washer. The idea is that I want the blows of the hammer to look like they radiate from the center, which is cut out in this case. So let's get started. Like I said, we're just going to hit straight up and down in the same spot. And there's a textured large washer for the bottom portion of our earring. And you can see all the lines appear as if they radiate from the center. Now let's do the second easiest one, which will be the top washer. For this one, we're going to use the ball peen hammer and we're going to use the ball end of the hammer. Again, you're going to hit as if you're a machine and just move the material underneath where the machine strikes. If you hit the edge of the material, don't worry about it, you could go back with either a file or an emery board to correct the edge. But try to stay within the, the top surface of the washer. There, we've successfully textured the top washer with the ball peen hammer. Now we're going to do the center washer. For this one, we're going to use a slightly different type of texture. And what I mean by that is I'm going to use the edge of the hammer. I'm not going to strike with the normal face of the hammer. I want to use the edge. In other words, I'm kind of holding it in an awkward position to create a texture that isn't random or normal, uh, or something that you would normally think of a hammer creating. Now, for this one, I'm going to try to make sure that every single blow lines up perfectly so that we create an overall uniform texture. Watch how I do it. There, now I've finished put, applying a texture to the center washer. Now, if I arrange these on top of the bench block for you, you can see how they will appear when I turn them into our earring. So, the next thing that we need to accomplish is creating the holes that will allow the jump rings to connect them. To do this, I'm going to need to mark the spot where the hole is to be drilled using a center punch. Now, a center punch is basically just a stick of steel that has a sharpened point at one end. And what we do is we strike this point into the material to create what's called a kernel, which is a little divot where the drill bit will go in order to drill through the material. If you don't create that divot or the kernel with the center punch, what happens is, is that the drill bit will slide all over the material until it roughs up the surface enough to create a spot where it will go through the material. So in order to be accurate, you need to use your center punch. So I'm going to punch one hole in the uh, largest ring, or I should say make one kernel, and then I want to make another kernel in the middle ring that will line up with that one, and I want to try and keep my texture horizontal there, so there we go. Now I need to make a hole so that this middle one can connect to the top one, and I hopefully have it lined up straight with the bottom one. And then finally, I'm going to make a hole for the top one to connect to the middle one. And in this case, I'm going to show you how to apply the French ear wire. So I'm going to create a hole at the top for the French ear wire to go through. 
So I've made all of the center punch marks that I need in order to drill. So now I'm ready to drill. So I'll put away my hammers and my center punch. And now what I want to do is to replace the bench block with a block of wood. So I'll transfer these items to the block of wood. There we go. Okay, now I've already pre-selected a drill bit of the proper size to go through these washers. The one thing that I would recommend is that you watch the temperature of these washers as you drill through them. This drill bit is going to create a lot of friction and you could potentially feel the heat in your fingers as you're holding that washer in place. If it starts to get warm, slow down and stop. Don't try to use any other type of holding device. It might get dangerous. You could, however, use, say, a damp paper towel over your finger if you wanted to, to try to keep the temperature down. Anyway, let's get started and drill these holes. Ow, that's getting a little hot. Let me use the wet paper towel trick. It's already pre-moistened. There. You want to use a wet paper towel because if the drill touches the towel, it's already wet, it's very fragile, it'll just rip. It won't get caught up in the drill. Okay, I've got the holes drilled now, and for all practical purposes, they're ready to assemble into earrings. However, if you do want to put a brighter polish onto these components, you can tumble them. Now, the tumbler is another burnishing process, and a tumbler, a simple one, may cost you as much as $100. The brass brushing although it is burnishing, it isn't as bright as the tumbler. So let me just show you what the tumbler does. Now, a tumbler operates with stainless steel shot. Now, this has been sitting in here a little while, so it's a little bit dirty. It needs to be cleaned. If it gets a little rusty or dirty, you just run it with the normal solution and it will clean it right up. These components could go in here with enough water to cover the shot and a burnishing solution. Burnishing solutions are cheap and easy to find, but if you don't have any, a couple of drops of liquid detergent with a little bit of lemon juice will work just fine. In other words, you want something that will lubricate and let the shot move freely over the material and you want a little bit of acid in the water in order to keep things nice and bright. Okay? Now, I'm not going to tumble these this time. I'm just going to assemble them for you. And in order to do that, I'm going to need a couple pairs of pliers. I don't need my wood block anymore. And I'm going to need a couple of you know, jump rings. One for here. And another one that's going to go in between here. And I'm going to need a French ear wire. Now, when, remember, whenever you work with jump rings, they're circles. You don't want to open them like they're hugging your material. You want to open them as if they're peeking at your material. Okay? The way to do that is you're going to take the jump ring and put it into one pair of pliers first and then you'll take the other pair of pliers, grab the other side, and then just bend them like so. And this will allow you to add your component to the jump ring. So there's the big one on, and now I want to put the middle one on. Okay, once the two components have been added to that jump ring, then all you have to do is just put those two ends together. It's good to bring them together and kind of push together at the same time. So now those are joined together. 
Let's do the next set. I'm going to do the same operation. Two sets of pliers, one on either side. Bend the jump ring open. I'll add this component first, and then I'll add the top portion. And I'll grab both ends of the jump ring, put it back together, making sure that they line up perfectly, and voila! I have my earring assembled. Now to add the French ear wire, all we have to do is open up the bottom jump ring in order to put it onto the top component. Okay? Now that's easy enough, but I want to show you something. See how the ear wire goes to the side and the earring goes straight down? Well, if a woman were to wear it, the earring would just be, you'd see just the side. So you may have to make an adjustment. That's easy to do. Before you put the earring on, all you have to do is hold the ear wire in one hand and with your pair of pliers, just turn the jump ring portion of the ear wire so it lines up with the top of the earring. Just like that. Okay. So now I can reopen it, add the top component to it, and shut it back down. Now it hangs correctly. Remember, you need two, and you want them to match. So try to match your textures. And you can see, in no time at all, you can have a really nice pair of earrings to either wear, or give away, or maybe even sell. All right. Thanks for joining us today. Please check out our other videos on the Online Jewelry Academy, and also check out the products we have available. Bye.